Hello everyone, I'm Forecaster Jack Sillen here with the Tropical Weather Discussion video for Monday, July 13th, 2020. Uh, this is going to be relatively short because we don't have a whole lot to talk about. Um, the only system in the Atlantic with a remote chance of developing into a tropical cyclone in the next, say, five days or so is pictured here over the far uh, northern uh, portion of the subtropical Atlantic. So if we zoom out a little bit, this is really out, um, you know, well northwest of the uh, Canary Islands, um, northwest even of the Azores, right? So it's about halfway between um, Newfoundland and the Azores, not exactly what we think of as being in the deep tropics. Um, this is actually an old non-tropical storm. Um, you can see the remnants of its uh, cold frontal boundary here and its warm frontal boundary up there. Um, but the uh, central portion of its circulation has gotten sort of cut off and there have been some attempts uh, to develop a little bit of convection. Uh, we can see that uh, in the animation here. Um, do I think that this is going to develop into a tropical or subtropical cyclone? I think probably not. Um, this thick stratus here is a, a hallmark of stable air. This is sitting right at the northern edge of sea surface temperatures that would be uh, even remotely supportive of a subtropical cyclone. So I don't think anything will come of this, even if it does happen to burn through another uh, name on the list. Uh, certainly not going to bring any impacts to uh, the U.S. or any other landmass for that matter. Moving out into the rest of the Atlantic, um, as always, we'll start with our ensembles, uh, taking a look here at uh, whether any low pressure systems are forecast to develop, and the answer is basically there is nothing happening in the Atlantic Ocean over the next uh, 15 days. Um, you know, of course, as you move past 10 days especially, the, the confidence drops off a bit, but um, even moving, moving through mid-July, certainly the next week or so, absolutely nothing happening. Um, climatologically, that's about what we'd expect. This is not usually um, the time of year that we would expect to see a lot of tropical cyclone activity, so we're basically in line with what should be happening this time of year. Um, moving over, this is the next uh, you know ensemble view. Uh, this is actually, it'll allow you to see storms that are a little bit weaker um, so, you know, there's one rogue ensemble member bringing a tropical storm through portions of the southern uh, tropical Atlantic here uh, in about 10 days. And then another rogue uh, system, you know, just one ensemble member out of 51 developing another tropical storm off the east coast. What's perhaps a little bit more intriguing is, uh, you know, a few, maybe half dozen uh, of these uh, ensemble members are, are trying to develop some system in the, the Gulf of Mexico in about 10 days. Um, uh, again, there's absolutely nothing to worry about at this point, uh, just something to keep an eye on. Um, so why is the Atlantic so quiet? Well, the answer right now is that we have this another plume of Saharan dust moving west across the Atlantic. Um, for a comprehensive explanation of why these uh, Saharan dust plumes are uh, prohibitive for tropical cyclone development, um, you can check out the blog post that I did on that. I'll link in the description below. Um, but basically, this thing is going to be moving west over the next few days into the Caribbean. It's not going to be nearly as intense as the uh, outbreak of Saharan dust we had a few weeks ago, um, but it will keep the tropical Atlantic quiet uh, for the time being. The dust sort of settles out um, as we move into uh, the mid-July here, a little bit after July 15th, uh, not expecting too much in the way of Saharan dust. Um, but then we uh, are still not expecting much in the way of activity um, because even in the absence of Saharan dust, um, the uh, tropical Atlantic isn't all that unstable. So uh, here I'm going to use our point and click sounding feature at weather.us to grab a, a vertical profile of the atmosphere in a region where the relative humidity at 700 hectopascals, so it's about 10,000 feet above the surface, um, is relatively high. So this is not in the middle of a Saharan dust plume. Um, this is uh, a, you know, a, a moist sounding, um, but you'll notice that if we follow this light blue line up, that's the trajectory of a parcel that's lifted off the surface. Um, it never really gets warmer than its surroundings, right? It's uh, basically following this, uh, this right hand white line, which is the environmental temperature. That means there's not really much, if any, in the way of instability. So uh, you can't get thunderstorms if you don't have instability. And even when we don't have Saharan dust, we don't have a whole lot of instability over the tropical Atlantic. So what do we need for this to change? Well, we need to push sea surface temperatures up a little higher, uh, get the mid and upper level portions of the atmosphere to cool down a little 
little bit, uh, and both of those are, are things that happen as we start moving into August and September. So uh, this is climatology working against us here in terms of tropical cyclone development uh, in the Atlantic, um, not expecting anything uh, to really pop up while the thermodynamic structure of the atmosphere looks like this. So uh, what can we say about uh, the state of the tropical Atlantic? What uh, are we sort of looking for in terms of uh, possible signals of activity later in the season? Well, sea surface temperatures. This is the biggest red warning, flashing, sirens, all that stuff. Nothing is happening out there right now, but something will eventually happen uh, as we move into August and September. That's the peak of the hurricane season. Uh, typically, the uh, hurricane season activity peaks on September 10th. So think about that. We still have two more months to go before the peak of hurricane season. Um, and eventually, we will get storms to form. Uh, it's just a matter of time. It happens every year, even in quiet years, we get one or two storms to form uh, out in the tropical Atlantic, and there's no indication that this is going to be a particularly quiet year. It is, we're already off to a record active start measured by the number of tropical storms, um, although we can argue about whether that's the best way to measure this or not. But anyways, um, the water temperatures across basically the entire tropical Atlantic, um, with the exception of a few localized pockets here and there, are much above normal um, and uh, particularly they're above normal in the uh, far southwestern Atlantic here near the Bahamas near Florida and in the Caribbean uh, and then off the East Coast these are the sort of three uh, particularly hot spots as well as down here south of the Cape Verde Islands um, so these uh, this is a really um, supportive signal for tropical cyclone activity once we get into the climatologically favored part of the season um, as far as tropical, uh, as far as uh, sea surface temperature forecasts go, uh, we can get out to 10 days with the ECMWF model, and uh, you know this is this is pretty remarkable. Uh, we have uh, 29 uh, degrees Celsius water temperatures, so that's the low 80s Fahrenheit, uh, extending all the way up to North Carolina. Um, you need uh, 26 uh, degrees Celsius to support a tropical cyclone. That's about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and that will extend uh, by 10 days, according to this forecast, um, nearly to Long Island. So that is not a good sign for possible uh, activity later in the season. If we get um, you know, continued uh, warm waters, um, basically pushing all the way up to the southern New England coastline, uh, and we happen to get a hurricane coming up here in September, uh, that hurricane is not going to be weakening um, as it normally would. So again, there's nothing at this point in time that says that we will get a hurricane to take advantage of these warm waters. But um, these warm waters make the odds of an impact from a hurricane uh, or a tropical storm much higher once we get into the later part of the season. Uh, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that over the coming weeks. Um, this is the one last thing that we'll take a look at uh, today, um, and this is the uh, sort of upward motion forecast, uh, more or less. Uh, you can see that the uh, zone of favorability here, which is the darker colors, um, starting to shift out of the Atlantic a little bit um, into Africa. So that means that we're going to get stronger African waves, uh, so those easterly waves. If you want to learn more about where they come from, why they show up in Africa, um, there's another blog post that I'll link in the description below. Um, but basically, we're going to get those waves to start emerging off the African coast in a stronger, um, in a bit of a stronger uh, amplitude here. Uh, and uh, they will move into an Atlantic that is marginally favorable for development. Um, once, a, once a wave has developed or a storm has developed, it actually wants to be basically on the western edge of this zone of favorable upward motion. That's where the shear is actually minimized. So um, this is the zone of minimal shear, uh, and that's not as helpful for a storm that hasn't developed yet. That developing storm or disturbance wants to be under this upward motion. But uh, once those storms move out of this zone of upward motion, uh, they like to develop, uh, continue developing in that zone of lower shear. Uh, so we could see a brief tropical cyclone emerge 
uh, from an African wave that moves right off the coast into this favorable uh, shear zone. But uh, you can see that pretty uh, pretty soon after it would move off the coastline, it's going to uh, head into this unfavorable sinking motion uh, environment. So not expecting anything in the way of a big long track uh, cyclone uh, to move all the way across the Atlantic. Um, as we move into later July, um, you know this zone of unfavorable uh, unfavorable sinking motion. Uh, really going to be expanding towards um, the Atlantic. So uh, no signals at the moment that we're expecting a flurry of tropical cyclone activity even as we move later into July. So that's all for me for now. I'll be back next week with another update. Uh, probably going to be another one uh, without much to talk about, but no news is good news on the tropical weather front, especially this year. So uh, have a good week. Thanks so much for watching.